Okay, today I thought we'd talk about the Target Earth robot. Target Earth, it was a movie that was made back in 1954, and according to what you see online, it cost about 86000 to make. It was a seven-day shoot, but they sent, spent uh, four months in post-production, which is your editing, your rotoscoping, your audio, all that good kind of stuff. So, I mean, the total for the whole thing is 86000 So this is a very low-budget movie. Produced by uh, Herman Cohen. He was only 25 at the time. Um, special effects robot were built by David, I think it's pronounced Kohler. Anyway, supposedly it was built in Herman Cohen's garage. And uh, it again, goes back to it being a very low budget movie. Uh, Mr. Kohler died back in 1980, so we can't talk to him. The guy inside the robot was a uh, Steve Colbert, and other notable things is there are several images throughout the movie where you can see the power cord for the light effects in the robot being drugged behind the uh, the robot. Oh, what else? I think I think it's time to talk about the rotoscoping and stretching and all that good kind of stuff. Anyway, there was only one robot. And in the movie, it was supposedly Earth being invaded by a whole bunch of robots. But uh, they could only afford to make one. And to make it look taller, they do a process that's called rotoscoping. And I'm trying to decide where I can lay this book so that I can show you pictures the easiest. Um, hang on, everybody. It's going to be a bumpy ride. I think maybe the walking chair and BB-8 will give us a little room here. You sit over there, BB-8. And I do some of it here. So, back when I was going to do this project, I had a few things I had to, I had to figure out. One, what was the true scale? Where could I get more images? You know, all that sort of stuff. The people that were involved in it are all long gone. The body of the robot was never seen again in any other movie. However, the legs, this would have been the only part that cost them money. You can be sure that this whole part up here in the movie was made out of cardboard. But the legs, that flex hosing would have cost them the, probably the biggest amount of money. And, of course, fabricating the metal funnel boot things. And, well, as long as we're talking about that, let's finish that up. I've got pictures here that will show. Here we go. So there was a Superman episode where Superman's with this cardboard box robot. But you'll notice the legs and the feet are still the same. So the legs and sur feet survived after the movie was done and got used again. And then also... In the 1962 film, Creation of the Humanoids, he had this, see if we can get this on screen, had this boxy type robot, and it still had the same legs. Here's that uh, one that was reused again in that movie, but it's a Superman robot, basically. Still had the same legs. So, the legs survived because they cost money. They had a value. So what I originally started trying to do was to figure out what the scale was, how was I going to build it. I'm trying to get back far enough so we can get the whole thing in picture. And I started by doing, well, I want to say I started by doing cardboard mock-ups. But actually, before I ever did cardboard mock-ups so I could look at the scale, I actually took a trip to Home Depot and the Knolls and all those type places. And I bought a bunch of sheet metal, and I wanted to find out whether, with the tools I had in my shop, my welders, my spot welders, my, my bar and brake for uh, cutting and bending metal, whether they would all be big enough to do this, and if I fabricated it, could I weld one up out of metal. So I actually made one out of metal, not based on any particular scale. I was just actually drawing it out on the metal and cutting it and bending it and welding it, just to see what I could do, I'm trying to rule out ways that I might build this thing because at that time I was only thinking about building one for me for in here in the museum 
So I finished that first one and it was very clear that it was totally uh, under scale in, in all dimensions and not right. And that one actually ended up up in the woods in the back part of our property. I tied it to a tree and I'm pretty sure it's still up there. I honest to God have not looked at it in over two years, but last time I was up in the woods it was still strapped to a tree up there to uh, maybe scare the shit out of hunters that shouldn't be up in the woods. But um, so once I decided, okay, I could do it, but it was way too much work, way too hard. Do I want to make this thing out of cardboard or make it out of wood? At that point, I decided it didn't matter what I made it out of. I needed to figure out the scale. So I started uh, building body sections um, based off of the only information I had at the time would be like taking frame grabs from the DVDs and scaling up things like doorways that had actors in them and splicing the images together because you could look up the size of the actor online. You can find out and all the details about that and trying to figure out scales. How big was the robot? And there were also articles written about this where they talked about how they rotoscoped it. See how this looks all stretched out? Well, that's what rotoscoping did. They actually stretched the image out. Interesting thing about these two pictures, if you watch the movie, this white line is something I added. It actually shows the power cord going up the stairs to the back of the robot's foot. And here you can see the power cord coming up. He just broke through this window. The power cords uh, drooped down and going back there to to power the blinking lights in the robot. So anyway, I started by getting uh, frame grabs and trying to determine what the size of it would be. And I was trying to decide whether I would want to make it the way it looked in the movie, rotoscope stretched, or whether I would want to make it the way it probably actually was. Because you would get images of like the head here when it's laying on a table. This hasn't been rotoscoped because there's other actors right by it and the table and everything else. So you're going, okay, this head looks a lot more boxier than the one that's been completely stretched out and rotoscoped. And then you've got the, the one still that you can find everywhere. It's not rotoscoped, but it was shot from the low angle like I started this video from to make it look taller since they... Well, if they stretched it, they would end up deforming their, their actors. So, I initially started building cardboard templates for the body, arms, and head based on how it looked in the movie. They didn't have any real way to confirm what it looked like in real life. And I did one whole mock-up in cardboard. It wasn't good enough. I could tell my skills were still, still off. So that cardboard one got recycled, got a whole bunch more cardboard and started up again. Because there's a lot of complex angles here you got to figure out if you want to make everything look right. And I did the second one and I can't quite remember what the deal was on the second one. There were three of them all together. So let's just jump to the third one. Oh, I remember what the second one was. second one looked pretty good. It looked very much like the rotoscoped robot. And at that point, I was talking to a friend of mine in uh, L.A. saying, I don't want to do the metal work on this. We could make them out of cardboard or we could make a master in cardboard and then fiberglass. Or we could just go right to a, a metal fab shop and pay them to work from my drawings or my mock-up. In the end, it was decided that I would just look for a metal shop to do that where I would take them in my cardboard mock-ups so they could recreate them in, in metal. So the places that I were, was going to go to and end up going to were like um, HVAC places, places that do air conditioning ducts for businesses and industry, because that's almost always custom work. So they've got uh, plasma cutters and laser cutters, and they've got all the benders and welders and guys that do nothing but work in sheet metal all day long. So once we decided we were going to do that, I was just getting ready to roll. I had already talked to a few places about the project, trying to find people that are interested in something like this. Of course, as you can imagine, it's just insane. At that time, though, my friend in California came up with these pictures, which actually are the same ones that I have down here at the feet of my display. And these are pictures of the actual prop 
not rotoscoped. You got a side, you got a front. So I could actually see how it looked. So at that point, the second cardboard one that I'd made that looked good rotoscoped, everything stretched out, that got recycled and I got a whole bunch more cardboard and started all over again on the third one, which was to look the way it actually looked. And that kind of, here's uh, some pictures of cardboard mock-up. Of course, the head's on the side, but you can get the rough idea what I went with. How they always had the robot standing on a uh, black box so it would look as tall as they wanted it to look in the movie. And even here, you can see it's still standing on the riser for getting their publicity shots and stuff for the movie. The other thing that's hard to tell is, is what color was the robot really? Was it uh, a matte white? It's a very unfinished looking color feature to it. These are black and white images. Or was it silver? Didn't know. So when I made the, uh, well when I had the metal bodies fabricated from my cardboard templates and I brought them home, I ended up painting them this uh, gunmetal kind of gray. I wanted to give it that mottled off color look in places with the gunmetal type paint, um, hammer tone they call it, to give it that kind of look. But it could very well have been, as I did in this small miniature I built, it could have been white. It's really hard to say. And uh, this miniature one actually has full uh, lighting effects in it. There's, you would put some button cell batteries inside of the display. And have I got any other pictures here that might interest you? I've got uh, a lot of the dimensional drawing pages that I sent along with my cardboard templates to the, to the metal shop. Oh, yeah, there's me in the shop standing next to the cardboard mock-up after I'd located the uh, proper hose. Like I say, this is the most expensive part of the whole thing. And I was starting to work on different uh, foot designs to try to look like the way it looked in the movie. And again, another image of trying to work out scales based on the new pictures of the robot. Here, took the same scale picture we had and superimposed my cardboard mock-up in place of the one that was there so I could compare the two. More notes on dimensions. I did that with several of the images where I uh, would take and superimpose my parts in black and white onto there so I could get a rough idea of if I was getting the scale really close or not. Just some more images of frame grabs from the movie before it was rotoscoped. Dimensional stuff. I guess these are probably just a bunch of stills from the from the film. I don't think there's probably anything there of any particular value. All the receipts from all the different places. Now these shots from the shop you might find interesting because here you can see there was one, two, three, four, five. And the sixth one was this one. So there were six of them all together. So we could try to come out of this and break even basically is what I was trying to do. I knew I was going to lose all my time and work. But if we could sell the other uh, five to get back all the money that the metal shop and materials and all that stuff costs, then I could have mine at basically no cost except my time. They all had uh, fancy black bases. Mine has a, a different riser built with tiles to match the tiles that I put out here in the floor. A little bit different deal. And let's say there we are, just a picture here. So, what else can I tell you? Um, well, some of you might want to know where the cardboard mock-up ended up. So, those of you that aren't interested, go ahead and stop the video now. Because this is going to be a little bit of a walk. We're going to walk from here out to the shop. And I'll show you where that number three cardboard mock-up ended up. I didn't recycle it. Well, I did recycle it, but I didn't didn't burn it or throw it in the trash. Got to uh, got to fasten this gate back so the horses don't get out. Hang on everybody. Okay. 
Can you imagine it? Just last week we had 12 inches of snow here in one day. There was so much snow that the snowblower couldn't move it. I had to get the tractor out. But since then we've had four days of uh, above freezing weather and rain. So I'm kind of glad it was above freezing because all that rain would have been snow and we'd have, we'd have really been in a fix. But it's really weird when you think about it. Just a few days ago this was 12 inches deep in snow and now thanks to the 38 degree weather and the rain it's melted a lot of it. This big building here I call the chicken coop. It's because at one time it actually was a large manufacturing chicken coop. <laughs> is the shop. And I'm going to show you where the cardboard one ended up. It'll have uh, six years with a dust on it or thereabouts and that's where it ended up on my machine man carriage the robot that actually walks I'll put a link to the video down below where I took it to a parade and it had it uh, pulling me and some of the grandkids it'll hold up to three adults and the Legs actually perform the walking, the turning, forward, backward, left, right. But I needed a body after the carriage part was done. I went, well, I've still got the target earth guy. And all I'd have to do is fabricate some new arms that could look like they're holding the rails of the carriage. And that's where, uh, that's where that cardboard mock-up ended up and painted it so it would be waterproof, which is a good thing because the day of the parade it was raining. And so it kind of made the cardboard waterproof. Now, as far as the one that's up in the woods, we can... I haven't been up there, like I said, in probably two years. We'll take a short jaunt up here. Shouldn't be much snow, because <clears throat> I don't have boots on. There shouldn't be much snow up in the woods because of the trees. Trying to get under the trees where I can get a little better traction. Yeah, if I edited videos, we could just edit from one place to the other, but you all know I don't edit videos. I choose not to waste my time doing that when I could be doing projects or Hope this isn't on. Don't want to get zapped. Usually in the winter. Yee. I'm going to leave that down for now. I'll put that up when we're done. And so usually in the winter we don't have that hot because it's just going to short out. Oh, it's still there. The grandson has built himself a fort next to it. You see it up there hiding in the trees. So, that was the very first one that I built in metal. Still in one piece, amazing. <laughs> All right, that's it for this one. See you guys later.